Hi, this is Mark Smith, and I'm with Family Tree Counseling Associates. And the topic of today's video is eight qualities that you don't want in your marriage counselor. Many people, uh, when they first start shopping for a marriage counselor, they, they've never done it before, they don't know how to do it, they don't really know what, what's good, what's bad. Uh, you might be hesitant to talk to the neighbor about your marital problems for fear that it'll uh, spread through the neighborhood in the form of juicy gossip. So you get online and it's sort of a crapshoot. So I, I'm just going to I'm gonna tell, tell it to you straight. You come here, you can go somewhere else, but uh, these are eight qualities you don't want. Uh, the first quality is going to sound sort of odd, and that is... What you don't want is somebody who's out to try to save your marriage. Uh, that sounds sort of counterintuitive. Uh, most people, when they when they come to marriage counseling, there's been so much hurt and damage, and there's so many unresolved issues that uh, Let's the three of us sit around and try to figure out how to make your marriage better. That's not going to float. That, that ship has sailed a long time ago. There's some kind of marital crisis. The, the D word, divorce, is being bantered about. There, there's hurt feelings. There's psychological walls between you. Uh, a little bit of marriage enrichment isn't going to cut it. So, so you don't want a guy or a gal on a mission to try to save your marriage. What you want is a therapist who's going to redirect you to the real core issues, and that is you. You two people as individuals who no doubt uh, grew up in dysfunctional families like everybody else and who um, need uh, to do some work on yourselves and to, to find out the truth about your particular marital wounds and why those wounds uh, brought you into uh, this particular marriage. Uh, you need to, to, to learn those things. I'm smiling because I'm looking in the background. I hadn't noticed, but this is this is a picture of my parents uh, when they got married. And uh, your marital problems uh, are that. Your, your marital problems are rooted in mom and dad and the particular union that they formed and uh, you, you're going to end up reenacting um, uh, issues from uh, from growing up and, and how you were loved. We, we pick people who, who basically are going to love us with a very similar type of love as the love we grow up with. So, second thing you don't want in a marriage counselor is what I call a passive sissy beard stroker. You know, somebody who their their particular philosophical belief, which is silly, is you can figure it out for yourself. So they, they sit back and say, well, what do you think? And you know what? If you can figure it out for yourself, you wouldn't take the time and energy and the money to come in and ask him <laughs> what his opinion was. Uh, so so it, really what it is is they just lack courage and conviction. So you want somebody who has some direction, who, who will shift how you think, who will give you some answers. Uh, we many times have had people come to Family Tree and they tell us that they've learned more in one session with us than they learned in four months with us with a sissy beard stroker so the third thing you really really need to have in, in, in a, a marriage counselor is somebody who's done work on themselves they've done their own work uh, you honestly when you're looking for a, a, a talented uh, uh, effective marriage counselor. Don't think that the best thing is is to find one who's still married. You know, if one's divorced, don't scratch them off the, your list because it means they've got some grit. They've been through some stuff, uh, 
and everybody is dysfunctional and if you're going to become a counselor you know you you have to have a whole fistful of issues so uh the important thing isn't whether or not they've been divorced i wouldn't go to somebody who's been married and divorced five times certainly but um the important thing isn't whether they're they're married or divorced the important thing is have they been to therapy uh, for a lot of years um have they um cried their own tears do they know what their own issues are and are they pretty open with that too because there's you know there's nothing there's nothing to be ashamed of in working on your own issues but but if if they are on a mission to save the world and they've never touched their family of origin stuff do not go to that person because they're dangerous um the the fourth thing is uh uh, don't go to a therapist that doesn't have a whole lot of content online about their approach. Uh, you don't have to go for a, an initial session uh, these days to check out a therapist. You don't have to interview them for a half an hour on the phone. Just go to their website and read their material. Uh, our practice probably has more uh, content online than every other practice in town combined times two <laughs> we have a lot of content and you'll know exactly who we are you'll know exactly where we came from and uh, but if if they've got some you know 1999 brochure website with no real uh, helpful content on issues just don't go there if they're not going to be helpful um, the fifth thing that you don't want in a marriage counselor is you don't want somebody who doesn't focus on your family of origin. Um, again, you, you got to focus on these people. Sometimes I look at this this picture and I go, "Don't do it." <laughs> I'm glad they did it because I wouldn't be here. But that's where it's at. Grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad. Find out who they are how they loved you, how they hurt you, and how that is being replayed in your marriage. If, if there's no work on the family of origin issues, you're wasting your time and you're totally wasting your money. Um, uh, we spend the first two sessions uh, almost completely digging into uh, your family of origin stuff and finding out who you are and where you came from. Finding out about your siblings and about your children, about your grandparents. We want to know you very well before we venture to offer feedback. But once we do, once we, I had a case come in this week, you know, I saw him twice, and then I did a two hour feedback session. She says she was just astonished that I was able to piece together um, who they were from two hours. Well, we do that all the time. It's, it's simple given our background and how many times we've, we've done that with people. So the sixth thing that you do not want in your marriage counselor is that they are on your insurance panel. You think that's a good thing. Hey, they're on our insurance panel. Let's go there. No. The only therapists that are on insurance panels are ones that are hurting for business because they're not very good. I'm not on any insurance panel. You get on an insurance panel, you get paid half as much, and you wait six to ten weeks to get paid if you get paid at all. Um, who would sign on for that deal? Would you, would you at work say, tell you what, I'll wait six weeks to get paid, and I maybe will get paid. Maybe If that's all there is, you'll take it. And so a therapist that is on your insurance panel uh, is not a good therapist, uh, probably. Um, uh, you don't want to skimp on what you pay for marriage counseling. You know, <clears throat> if I'm having brain surgery, I want the best guy. I, I don't want to save a few bucks and have him go, oops, <laughs> and turn me into a vegetable. And your marriage just even from a financial perspective, a divorce is, is a financial tsunami that will just wreck and devastate your finances. 
not to mention the emotional toll on yourself, your spouse, your children, your community, your friends, your family. You don't want to go through it, so you want the best. You don't want to skimp. You know, you don't want the $20 copay guy. You know, you want the best people in town. And uh, so don't get the guy on your insurance panel. Uh, the, the, se the seventh thing you don't want is anybody who uses the term short-term therapy. If they're using the term short-term therapy, they don't have a clue what they're doing. You can't do, you can't fix uh, wounds from your family of origin. You can't remake you from the inside out in eight sessions. Short-term short -term therapy is basically driven by the insurance industry because they want people to get in and get out and not use their insurance very much. So uh, uh, you, you want uh, words like family of origin work, recovery work, not short-term therapy. That's, that's a, it's a joke, actually. So and then the last thing, the number eight thing you don't want is any kind of medical model. You don't want a doctor... You don't want to be a patient. Uh, you don't want there to be those little glass windows that separate the unwashed from the great doctors and their staff. Uh, you know, people come in and see me. They just they just call me Mark. I'm just a person. You know, uh, masters level therapists do 95% of the marriage counseling. You don't need a PhD. They they mainly do psychological testing. Um, and you certainly don't need a medical model that will put a diagnosis on you that probably isn't accurate and, and will hurt you down the road in terms of when you apply for medical insurance or health insurance. So these are eight things you want to steer clear of. Um, I wish you the very best in your search for somebody who can make a difference Honestly, um, like a lot of things in life, a great football coach can be the difference between an 8-8 eight and eight team and a championship team. A great doctor can be the difference between life and death. And a great marriage counselor can be the difference between a pretty functional, pretty workable, pretty happy, pretty fulfilling marriage and a bitter, destructive lose-lose situation in a divorce. So um, go buy these these qualities that, that I've laid out and don't go and pick anybody like that. And, and I wish you the best and work on your marriage. And I thank you for uh, watching this video. Take care.